listen to the mix with and without the EQ with auto gain on. I mean, for me, this is the epitome of a mastering EQ. Hello everyone, Dom here, and in this video, we're going to be checking out a plugin that emulates one of the most historic equalizers in the recording history. I'm talking, of course, about the GML 8200, and the plugin we're going to check out today is the Pulsar Model 8200. If you've ever been into a professional studio, a mastering studio, there are high chances that you've seen a GML 8200 EQ in the flesh. This is one of the most iconic EQs. This is one of the most popular and most sought after parametric analog equalizers ever created. It was created in 1991 by George Massenberg. If you don't know who George Massenberg is, I would highly suggest you check it out, you Google it, and you can listen to this EQ in countless records. Now, the reason why the GML 8200 was so popular was because it was a really musical EQ. The curves were really musical and you could really enhance every sound that you could run through it. But at the same time, it was really certain so when it came to parametric EQs, it was one of those EQs that could really pinpoint a frequency and problems and then fix them. All of this without creating artifacts. It was really transparent and people loved this. Here in the UK, I was able to find it around 7K, 6,500, something like this. It's definitely not a cheap EQ, but when you try it, you really start to understand why it's so sought after. It's a beautiful EQ and I been lucky enough to have used this extensively in studios that I've worked for. I don't own it yet, but it's on my list along with the Massive Passive and maybe the Mazalek as well. So with this being on my personal dream list of EQs, you can imagine that when Pulsar Audio, the kind sponsors of this video today, got in touch with me several weeks ago and they told me, hey Dom, we have a new plugin that we want you to test. Uh, let us know if you like it, what do you think? And I found out that it was a GML 8200 emulation. I definitely wanted to put my hands on this EQ and I'm glad I did. So this is the Model 8200. This video is not going to be a review of the plugin per se, but I'm going to try and play as much material as possible. I'm going to try and play mixes. I'm going to try and play individual instruments like piano, cello. I'm going to play some vocals through it. And I hope that by the end of this video, you will be able to tell if this plugin is for you and if it's worth your time and money. Hey guys, Future Dom here. I just wanted to let you know that what you see in this video is an early better version of the plugin that Pulsar Audio sent me to test. So by the time you watch this, there's going to be a new version, the release version, that's going to have some improvements and some minor changes. Okay, back to the video. I'm going to play my single cosmic parenthesis through it. This is an unmastered special version so that you can hear what this EQ can do. Let's do it.
Okay, so let me explain a little bit uh, about how I use this EQ. This is pretty much what I would do on a real GML A200. This EQ can do equally well the really colorful broad strokes to enhance some specific characteristics of a mix, but it can equally do well the really narrow notches that really allow you to tame certain problems in a mix. So what I'm doing here is, first of all, I'm trying to find the places where I want to boost and I'm also trying to find any problems that I think might need my attention when it comes to cutting, doing surgical cuts. Now, as you can see, what I'm doing here is I'm boosting quite a bit, finding the problematic frequency and then I'm actually reducing the level. However, what I want to say is this, if you don't have trained ears, uh, please be careful with this technique because if you really boost so much on any frequency, every frequency is going to sound bad. So you need to make sure that you understand if the frequency is really problematic or is just too loud because you just boosted it. So this is a trick, it's completely valid and many people use it, but if you're not trained, I would suggest that you do this. Go really narrow first, boost it, and then when you go down, start making your cue a little bit more wide and see, does it still sound bad? This is a good way to have your ear get accustomed to the actual sound again uh, without feeling threatened from this really sharp notch. So let me explain a little bit what we have here. First of all, we have the essence of the GML 8200 that uh, Pulsar Audio have emulated. These are all fully parametric and the low band and the high band can also become shelving bands. Pulsar Audio have added some really cool features that really add to the original design. So for example, we have the high pass filter, the low pass filter. The other really cool things that they've added is this sub band here that in my opinion sounds really, really good, but I'm going to let you be the judge of this. I'm going to play some examples. We also have an air band, which is very, very welcome. And we also have this feature, the tilt feature, which in my opinion, is a problem solver many, many times, and I'm going to show you how I use it in a second. So you can actually tilt your EQ curve like this. The EQ is mid-side compatible, so you can turn it into a mid-side EQ. We also have the DSR here, which works great on a channel basis, but also in the context of a mix. And we also have a gain scale. So this is really cool because you can actually set up your gain. And if you think that it's too much, you can actually scale all of the bands at the same time. We can also solo the stereo and mid channels. And for the auto gain connoisseurs out there, we also have an auto gain, which actually works really, really nicely on this plugin. This is actually an auto gain that I would use, even though I'm not a big fan of auto gain when it comes to EQs. Let's play this with the auto gain on and I'm going to do some mid side processing now. I mean, for me, this is the epitome of a mastering EQ. You can hear that the sound becomes bigger, it becomes wider, we can take out problematic frequencies, but at the same time, it doesn't sound like we've completely changed the balance of the mix. So I'm going to move on to another mix, completely different this time. This is another one of my singles. Uh, this is Crime Reborn. You can check all of these on Spotify. I'm telling this because many of you ask me, where can I find all this music that you're playing? So let's play this kind of art rock progressive rock track.
whenever you boost with this EQ, you can actually hear it. It's very, very obvious. You boost 2 dBs and you can actually tell that the curves are designed in a way so that it actually makes musical sense. This is the reason why we are using so many different EQs. We could possibly do everything using one digital EQ if you try and match the curves. Can you match the curves? Yes, of course you could potentially match the curves, but it will take a tremendous amount of time, most of the times, and some EQs, when you boost them, the actual curve changes throughout the gain range. So this, you cannot emulate exactly. We use all these different tools in order to get us to the sound that we want as fast as possible. And that's not because we're lazy. That's not because you don't want to spend time on your mix. The reason is because if you start trying to emulate an EQ curve, what you end up doing is you spend too much time trying to create the curve. And by the time you've made it, your ears are already tired, you have fatigue and your perception is wrong. Human hearing is really flawed. It's not perfect. So if you have a tool that will allow you to get to the result that you want faster, this is the tool that you should use. Otherwise, you have a recipe for disaster when it comes to mixing. Use an EQ that you know that when you reach a control you're going to get a certain sound. This is the reason why we use so many EQs. We don't want to be slow trying to replicate a musical curve when something does it straight out of the box. The next example is something that an EQ like the 8200 would be my first port of call. And this is orchestral classical music. I do a lot of cinematic music. And for this kind of genre, I always reach out for an EQ that is in this kind of vein. I'm going to play my reproduction of Lacrimosa that I've done in Cubase a while ago. See how this subband really enhances these double basses here. Another thing that Pulsar Audio do with their plugins that I really like is that they give you options when it comes to the interface. So we could have this view, we could have just the view like the actual analog EQ would be, and we also have just the graphic EQ view. I'll be honest with you, most of the times I would use this EQ with this view because I don't want to be distracted by graphs. I want to be able to listen to the sound and make my decisions based on this because the graph sometimes might be scary. This might look scary to me the way I see it right now, you know, or for some people. But the thing is, doesn't sound good. When you were using this EQ, you didn't have the graph. You didn't care how the EQ curve looked like. You cared how it sounded like. Now, this is a good example where I can show you the actual tilt right here. This is really, really useful because sometimes you have a specific track or you have an instrument that you feel that you actually need less low end and more mid range and highs or the other way around. And this actually solves the problem with one knob. I have a piano here, for example, which is again a track from my single Crime Reborn. And let me show you what I've done to this piano.
So basically what I've done is I added a little bit of body. I took away some of the resonances that I could find in this piano. And now let me show you what I can do with this tilt. I can actually make this piano sound a little bit more bright, more poppy, more rock kind of piano, or I can go completely classical. This is what I mean when I talk about musicality in an EQ. And now let's go Beethoven or Chopin. This tilt function here allows me to really make the sound a little bit more in your face by taking also away some of the low end or make it a little bit more mellow like it was played softer. Listen to this again. It's like if I told the pianist, in this case myself, play a little bit softer. And I love the fact that this is in one knob. This doesn't exist, of course, in the original GML 8200, but I find it really, really powerful that I can have a GML emulation and have these options right here without having to resort to another EQ to do this. I promise I'm going to play as much material as possible, so let's try a vocal now. This is the vocal from my two-year recreation. This is Eero, and let's see what we can do with this vocal. Soy el fuego que arde tu piel, soy el agua que mata tu sed, el castillo, la torre, yo soy la espada que guarda el caudal, tú el aire que respiro yo. Y la luz de la luna en el mar, la garganta que ansió mojar, que temo ahogar de amor. And let's also try the deesser. Soy el fuego que arde tu piel, soy el agua que mata tu sed, el castillo, la torre. So by pressing this button, I can actually activate the delta mode, which means that I only hear the S's. Vocals are another candidate for the tilt function here. Soy el fuego que arde tu piel, soy el agua que mata tu sed, el castillo, la torre, yo... Especially for pop vocals, this tilt band here will come in handy. Now I'm going to play a real cello. This is played by the amazing Mariona Delamo, and uh, she played the cello on my single Vintage Lullabies. This is actually one of the first recordings that we did. So what I'm doing here is I'm notching some frequencies that might contribute to a harsher sound when it comes to this cello and also some noise elements from the bow. This will actually, in the context of the mix, will make the cello sound fuller. It takes away the smallness of the cello. All these frequencies might contribute to the perception of this cello being small in the mix. So actually by cutting them, we're making the cello sound bigger, like a bigger sound. Let's try the tilt as well and see how the filter cleans up the low end. This plugin offers oversampling, so you could have up to eight times oversampling. 
So there you go, my friends. I hope that these examples help you understand how this EQ sounds like and whether this is an EQ that you want to have in your arsenal. Now, in the comments down below, let me know, have you ever tried the original GML 8200? Let me know about your experiences with it and let me know what you thought about the Pulsar Model 8200. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Happy mixing and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.